Uh, I am the director of the program here and also the advisor of all the students as well as uh, a paramedic instructor. Um, I'm guessing that a lot of you have heard my name mentioned many times that you have a face to it. Now you have a face to it. Um, over the past couple of years you've probably heard your students say Carol this, Carol that, and you might be wondering even who is this Carol person. That would be me. Um, and I also really would not be surprised at all if I'm not even going to be <laughs> if the uh, first thought from some of you came was not very pleasant thought from the So uh, I get that because I've gotten from these guys for a while. And I know how frustrating the paramedic program can be. So I am that face that you, you've got a face now with that name that I'm the one who required those graduates up here uh, to dig through all their old records to find those immunization records. They're the ones that had to find all the, well, or maybe some of the spouses, had to find the transcripts. They had to get them, get them ordered in. They had to get physicals. They had to take off time from work to go do an interview. And that was all just to get into the paramedic program, let alone everything that occurred afterwards. Um, you're looking at the one that I'm sure that they've cussed more than once in front of you. Because, you know, I did make it a little at the time when I did that. So you guys now know the ones that the person that they were cussing. And hopefully once in a while said something nice about this. So but anyway, I want to talk I want to talk to you guys first because though I'm kind of joking around about it with the and stuff, I'm not really joking totally because you guys have been there. You guys lived it with these guys. You, you made just as many sacrifices as they did, and probably in some ways you've made more sacrifices than they made. So I want to talk to you guys, because I know how tough the paramedic program is. I, I lived it, I live it every time I have a program. Every time I have a class, I feel like I read it. But you've gone through this with your, with your, with your spouses, with your sons, your daughters, uh, your parents, whatever it is. And though, yes, this afternoon and this evening it's all about the graduates, it's also about all of you, the family and the friends that have supported the graduates through the last two years. And it has been a long, difficult two years, we know that. Yeah. It's you. You're the ones that I have my deepest and most heartfelt thank you for. Um, without you guys, you guys wouldn't be here. Um, like I said, you, you have sacrificed more than they have in some ways. It's you guys that took the kids to school every day. It's you guys that put them to bed at night. It's you guys that made sure that they, the kids got here or mom and dad got here or whatever so that these guys could go to class, go to clinicals, go to internship, go to work, go to wherever it was, but they weren't at home most of the time. And we get that and we understand that and we appreciate that from you. You guys are the ones that made sure that there was food on the table. You're the ones that made sure that there was meals made for them, probably for these guys. Um, you guys are the ones that lost out on so much stuff. You know, you miss Christmases and stuff. Because in this field, you're going to miss that kind of stuff. But then you add it to the paramedic program, and some of these guys are doing clinicals the day before Christmas or the day after Christmas or Thanksgiving or whatever. You guys have made just as many sacrifices. You've been the cheerleader for these guys. When they want to give up and quit, you've been their cheerleader. Uh, you've been their cheerleader when they wanted to get on the phone and call me and tell me what they thought about me in the program. So I'm sure. And I appreciate you not letting me call them. Uh, but you guys have been, you're there. And if any one of these guys tell you that you weren't the backbone of them, they're lying to you. Because I've talked to most of these guys, and I know how, how much they love their families, how much work they put into it, how much, you look, how much work you put into it for them. So I would just like to thank you for entrusting your, your friends, your family, your sons, daughters, boyfriends, girlfriends, fiancés, whatever it was. You entrusted them to us for the last couple of years, and I really appreciate that. We found yeah. it to be a privilege, we do, uh, and it's not a privilege we take lightly. Uh, so, though these guys thought I was going to come up and talk about them, I, it's you that I'm ready, that I have my greatest 
thank you for it. And I appreciate that you've allowed us to be able to do this. Thank you.
to maintain the level of knowledge and skills and uh, competency expected of a paramedic in a rural area. There are some that would say that EMS is built backwards. The most skilled of us should wind up being in the rural area because there's not much more to support those people that live in western Kansas or in rural Kansas, I should say. Uh, if you're looking at operating within a big system, uh, there's plenty of resources there, short transport miles, and uh, a lot of money to support that type of activity. Oscar Wilde once said, education is an admirable thing, but, it but it's well to remember from time to time that nothing worth knowing can be taught. As EMS providers, we know experience is the best teacher. It builds confidence and competence to an open and eager mind. Today, though, is a much different day for all of us. Today I get to tell you how it really is, from real experience with real people. I get to tell you what I know to be true about a paramedic. I believe a paramedic is the single most significant job there is. I'm not just saying this because this is a paramedic school graduation, and I'm not saying that because I spent most of my adult life, 40 years plus, working in pre-hospital care and contingency medicine. As with other EMS attendant levels who willingly put themselves smack in the middle of tra tragedy, who willingly seek out life's worst moments and bring hope and comfort, willingly face the absolute worst that humankind has to offer, it is the paramedic who takes control with a level head, a firm voice, and gentle hands. To add a little perspective, I remember lying awake at night thinking to myself, wow, if I called 911 right now, I would get me. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm it. For all intents and purposes, that was true. There is no 911 for 911 to call. You're it. For that reason alone, most people cannot do this job. Most people are not willing to take the risks that you do every minute that you hold your paramedic certification. Notice I did not say every minute that you are working. I said every minute that you hold a paramedic certificate. Because your status as a certified paramedic, what is expected of you is not limited to who you are or what you do on duty. As the executive director of the board, I'm here to tell you that the state cares very much who you are and what you do all the time. As far as the state is concerned, who you are and what you do away from your job can have just as detrimental an impact on your certificate and your career as when you are working. Again, most normal people are simply not willing to be held to these kinds of standards. But you are, or you better be. Look at some of the EMS headlines, and you'll see how we, as individuals, fall prey to our shortcomings, and what an impact those headlines have on all of us as an attendant. Utah Fire Chief charged with prescription fraud. Dead man resurrected after waking up at his own funeral. Missouri medic pleads guilty to health care scam. Neighbor forced to transport fatally injured toddler due to an ambulance shortage. EMT rescues his own child when called to daycare for child abuse. And this one I find interesting. Naked EMS instruction. <laughs> Now, I know Barton's on the cusp of education. <laughs> but if my teaching job relies on this, I'm out of a job. <laughs> and actually, the emphasis there, truthfully, 
is that our EMS educators get away from standardized presentations and all the tricks of the trade and actually start teaching what we uh, know we should do for our patients. Experience has shown me that there are only three kinds of paramedics. There are the naturals, the ones for whom it is effortless. These guys have it flowing through their veins. It's just something that they are. They're the ones that work very hard to be the best that they can be. They read everything they can. They do, it tw uh, do twice as much continuing education that they need to. Uh, the ones who butt their, or bust their butts to make it look easy because being good is that important. The third type are the rest. They're the ones who slip through the cracks. The ones who view being a paramedic at just another part of the job. The ones who limp, uh, reach limply for the bare minimum. The ones who, when you know they are working, you stay out of their way. Because you don't want to be involved in the delivery or shared delivery of their care. You individually will determine whether this is just a job or a career, a career or a passion. Which one are you? Each of you knows that answer already. And I hope my words here today will solidify what you need to do with that answer. Standing here now, it seems surreal that it's been 42 years since I finished my initial training to deal with pre-hospital interventions, and that was battlefield medicine. During my transition to civilian EMS, my mentor showed me that as serious as this job is, it can also be fun. That more than anything, the job is about people. People who depend on you and deserve the best that you can offer. Every time, no matter what. Of course, I also learned the right amount of armor all it takes to make it impossible to sit in one place on a bench seat. But that was four decades ago. I was 19 years old and ready to save the world, and back then I believed I could, and I believed I would. Now looking back on those four decades, I believe I did. If only for one family, though I know it was many, many more, I did change the world. And now it's your turn. The question now is, how will you change? As you grow personally and professionally, you realize the definition of success changes. You are here today, obviously, as a result of great effort and achievement. But what now? Who will you be? Will your commitment and your effort allow an elderly couple to enjoy just one more anniversary? Or will your complacency and disinterest cause a grieving widow to wake up alone for the first time in 50 years? Well, your knowledge and skill remind you that a stomach ache is not always a stomach ache. Or will the culture of burnout and malaise allow you to believe that a drunk is always a drunk? Will your passion lead you to find or create innovative solutions to problems, old and new, or will just enough be enough? Today's the day. Now is the moment to ask yourself not only what kind of paramedic you want to be or will be, but how you will change the world. Because for paramedics, changing the world is not some esoteric notion. It's what you're going to do every day. In fact, right now, someone somewhere is going about their regular daily life. They are not thinking of you any more than you were thinking about them. But they are out there, sitting in traffic, buying groceries, having a late lunch with an old friend, planning a wedding, making a baby, walking between classes, or just lounging by the pool somewhere having a drink. Wherever they are, they are just doing their thing. They are happy and relaxed because they don't know that one day next week, next month, or maybe next year, their entire existence is going to be hanging by a thread. 
Their breath may be short, their heart may be fibrillating, their limbs may be convulsing, or they may be staring helplessly at a bloody, lifeless body of their child and the twisted metal that moments before was a bicycle. And there will be you. Your senses, your hands, and your decisions in that moment will be the difference between hope and hurt, life and longing, another birthday party or a child's funeral. What you do in that moment will change the world for them and for you, and that change cannot and will not be undone. So I ask you, who will you be in that moment? Will you be prepared or preoccupied? Will your passion for perfection carry that, that day? Or will the pursuit of mediocrity be too little too late? As you sit there, the slate is clean. The choice is yours. And I offer you this. Being a paramedic is the single most significant job there is. It is rich with reward and possibly the most fun you can have with your shoes on. But there are no second chances. Not for you, and not for those that depend on you. Who will you be? How will you change the world? On behalf of the Kansas Board of Emergency Medical Services, I congratulate you on your achievements, and I wish you the best for your service. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to start off by warning everybody. I'm not much of a public speaker. The closest thing I've done lately to public speaking is giving a radio report. And Nobody ever listens to those, really, unless you say something stupid, and then they just laugh about it and move on. So, but anyways, I'd like to start off um, by saying it's nice to see everybody um, from all the different classes. There's um, three separate classes represented here today, and I'm glad that all the ones that could make it made it, and the ones that couldn't, I wish they could be here today. But anyways, like you said, I'm Chris Minners, and today as a group, we are graduating as paramedics. Um, it's been a long road, but we are finally here, and we finally made it. So. Once again, congratulations to all of my classmates, and I hope we can all really enjoy today's celebration. It takes a lot of work and dedication to reach this point, and each one of us is standing a little taller today, and we should be. We should all be very proud of what we have accomplished. But like Carol pointed out earlier, we did not do this alone. Countless doctors and nurses and other hospital staff took time out of their busy days to mentor us during clinicals. When the clinicals were finally completed and we entered our internships, paramedics across the state of Kansas took each one of us under their wings and they shared their knowledge with us. They voluntarily subjected themselves to FISDAP. So those of you that don't know what FISDAP is, it's this handy little charting system that we have to use that they tend to break by every month and then they have to go back and refix and break something else and it's just, it's not much fun to deal with. So these people became our preceptors and they said they were willing to deal with FISDAP. So it, uh, it kind of made me think they either need some serious psychological evaluation <laughs> or Tom did not receive informed consent when you talked him into being three seconds. So I do have some textbooks for sale, Tom, if you're interested in a stack about this tall and you'd like to review those legal chapters again. Um, but anyways, regardless of how they came about to be preceptors, they took on a role that cannot be taken lightly. And they did it out of the goodness of their hearts. They shared their knowledge with us. They opened their second homes at the stations. And many of them are actual homes if we had needed a place to crash. And more importantly, they made sure we didn't kill anybody. So a big thank you goes out to all those services and paramedics and EMTs who made it possible for us to learn. Um, but while we were out there learning, we were very busy with a lot of hours, a lot of stress, and I know I can only speak for myself, but I know I was a little moody at times, and it wouldn't surprise me if a few other people up here to say the same. Um, so not only did our preceptors have to put up with that, but so did all the folks at home. So to all the people in our support systems and in our lives, thank you for sticking with us. And sorry for all those times we were cranky. Every hour of medic school is an hour spent away from loved ones in our lives and usually puts more work on their shoulders. So for everyone who supported the student here today, thank you. And I hope you can also enjoy the day, for it is also for you to celebrate as you own a part of this accomplishment too. And there's another group of people here with cause to celebrate, and that would be our educators, the ones that are present here today and the ones that are. Um, the staff at Barton's EMS Education has put in a lot of work to get us here. Not to mention having to put up with them many times also. So thank you all for sharing your gift of knowledge with us and for resisting that urge to choke us. So I'm sure at times you wanted to kick our butts, and I'm definitely sure we deserved it. But despite it all, you got us here and really did it in a way that shows that you 
care and have a vested interest in our success. So to all the teachers and lab assistants of all the different classes, thank you very much. Out of all the people here who helped make our education possible, though, I'd like to say a special thank you to Carol. For those of you that don't know Carol, um, it would be hard to convey the type of person she is. So I'd like to share a little bit. I'd, I'd like to share a little personal story of actually how I wound up at Barton. Um, a few years ago, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, and it was suggested to me that I should become a paramedic. And I didn't know anything about it, so I got on Google and I started looking stuff up. And before too long, I realized about 20 minutes that you know this is what I want to do. This is for me. But Google doesn't tell you how to make that happen, and I was clueless. So I sent out some emails requesting help and information to a few colleges that had paramedic programs in the state of Kansas. About 20 minutes later, I had an email return from Carol. And I can tell you she was not only the first to respond, she was the only one. But she personally took me step by step to get me enrolled in my EMT class, because apparently you just can't go straight to paramedic school. <laughs> And uh, she did all this, I believe it was like a Thursday and Friday, she did all this work over a Thursday and a Friday when class started on Monday, the very next Monday. So, and since then nothing has changed. Uh, she's been a constant advocate for her students, and she's available 24-7 and full of passion. She really exemplifies what it means to go above and beyond the call of duty. And uh, I know you've had a rough year this year, Carol, um, in your personal life, but you still managed to handle all of that and all of our problems at the same time. So I feel very confident that I can speak on behalf of all the students in our class here when I say thank you and I have a right uh, I'd also like to say a quick thank you to all the people behind the scenes, like Mary Jane and all the ones who I don't even know about, um, that are the glue that holds all of this together, I'm sure. And I'm sure I've missed one of other people that deserve a thank you, and for that I apologize. Um, but I figured I'd better move on. Um, when I sat down to write this, write this speech, I kind of struggled with what I wanted to include. And these types of speeches always seem to have some kind of advice and not really in a position to give advice. And they always have some, some kind of very cliche well wishes about you know chasing your dreams and soaring with eagles and all that. And I mean, <laughs> that, that doesn't really fit for paramedics because after all, we work in water filled ditches at 3 a.m. <laughs> So I was, uh, I was searching for something to say, and a few weeks ago I was on shift, and I just happened to be watching some TV before I fell asleep, and on this TV show I was watching, there was a poster, and it said Practical Idealism. And it kind of caught my attention and made me shake my head in my half-asleep state, because initially, to me, those two, new, those two words did not belong together. If something is practical, it's just practical. It's the easiest or cheapest solution. It just makes sense. But if something is ideal, that's the way things would be in a perfect world. It's the best of the best in every way and how. But after I thought about it for a couple of minutes, the pairing of these two words started to not only make sense, but also seem very, very fitting for why paramedics are even here. Because the ideal answer when they started looking at fatalities occurring in the pre-hospital setting would be to have a physician respond to every call for help. Every car wreck could get a full trauma team, including a trauma surgeon. Every chest pain call could be answered by a cardiologist and a pulmonologist and a gastroenterologist. And they could stand in your living room and argue whether it was the big one or pneumonia or a pizza game an hour ago. And that would be ideal. You would have the best of the best. But that was in no way practical. So they made paramedics. They took some people, they gave them highly specialized training, and that's where practicality meant idealism. And uh, we've learned a lot since then. You know, we no longer put sandbags on well, chest, you know, like, hey, you have trouble breathing, let's throw 25 pounds of sand on it. <laughs> but, uh, but I really think there is some food for thought in there that can help and be applied to our careers today, too. And I, I would hope for Ed, myself and all the paramedics here, when approaching a problem, and it can be any problem in our careers, to try to find a solution with practical idealism. It's important, it's very important, to, you know, strive for the idealistic things in EMS. But if that is our only focus we have, our careers will be plagued with disappointment and snuffed out by early burnout. On the other end of the spectrum, if you don't strive towards the best, it's easy to become complacent. And unfortunately, complacency is a real problem and it costs real lives. So finding a middle ground of practical idealism, you know, it might mean picking your battles, or it might mean cutting yourself some slack, or being reasonable as you try to raise the bar for yourself and all the people around you. If we look to the roots of our profession as guidance of where practicality meant idealism, I really do believe our careers will be better. So there's my two cents of advice that I put together, so you can take it or leave it. But in closing, I'd just like to say that I have thoroughly enjoyed paramedic school. Um, don't get me wrong, at times it was horrible. If you could have seen me, I believe it was December 26th last year, um, I was leaving um, 
work or clinical and going to one or the other, and I've been, been going for about 60 straight hours back and forth between the two. And I want to say I wanted to quit, but I definitely just wanted to go home and go to bed. But I picked up the phone and I called one of my classmates. I called the other Chris over here, and, and we had a nice conversation, and by the end of it, I felt better. But during that conversation, I remember saying to him, you know, Winters, being a paramedic better be the coolest thing ever, or we got totally hosed. <laughs> So with that in mind, I would like to wish you all the best of luck in your careers. Good luck at boards tomorrow, those of you that are testing. Um, good luck at graduation tonight, hopefully nobody trips. And I, I really do hope that you think being a paramedic is the coolest thing ever. So, thank you. Um, now we're going to do our recording. Yeah. Uh, we have like, like uh, Chris said, we're going to go have three classes that are graduating from the end of the Central Salina class. Um, with a couple of those representing, they tested last December. And then we have the Tweet class, that's part of them here. And then we have the Great Bend Junction City, or sorry, Great Bend Grand Class class. And uh, that's an actual combination of ITV, yeah. so part of the time their one group was in Great Bend, one group was in Junction City, and then I was back and forth between the two, and then part of the time we were together, that would be the two exercises. So, uh, we actually have a distinction in the last one. Yeah. All right, so out of class, we have, and I'm going to just real quick announce for the ones that are going to come to the room for more Brandon Bravo, Kyle Goodell, Nick Cannon, Robert Moran, Alan Howard, Jason Ricker, and Ron Howard. Representing them today is Chris Leach.
through the storm.